Weird sciencey facts that boggle my mind. Turns out with the right moves, a few British flyboys can make a bunch of Germans really wet. Now, full disclaimer, this is more of a history and engineering story than really like a science story that would normally go in this series. But it's a story I like and have wanted to tell for a while, so I was either shoving it into this series or just doing it on a random Tuesday for no apparent reason. Anyway, back in 1939, everybody in the world got in this big disagreement about who should run the world. And everybody started getting really creative and innovative about ways to win. In that argument. Atomic bombs and jet planes and inflatable trucks and tanks. And in that innovative spirit, a man named Barnes Wallace was skipping marbles in his garden pond, which is apparently a thing British people do. It's kind of like skipping rocks on a lake, but with, you know, marbles. And he has a light bulb moment, and he goes and he talks to the British military, and he's like, I got this idea. We could sink moored battleships by taking a spherical bomb and bouncing it over the top of the water to hit the battleship. Which seems like a lot of extra steps when, you know, torpedoes existed. And the British government takes a look at his idea, and they're like, yeah, we could do that, but damn. Damn what? Exactly. We could use your bouncing bomb to blow up dams. Why would you want to blow up dams, you may be asking yourself? Well, it turns out at the time, hydroelectric power is a handy resource to build war machines. And they also help keep water out of all the places you don't want it to be. So blowing up your enemy's dams could be helpful in making it harder for your enemy to build stuff to blow you up. Okay, so then the next obvious question is, why do we need a bouncing bomb to blow up a dam when torpedoes and regular bombs exist? Can't we just use those? And the answer is... Kind of. Bombs back in the day weren't super accurate. You, you just drop them out of an airplane way up high in the air and, and hope they'd hit something important. And dams are a pretty tough target to hit even in the daylight, but it turns out bombers are a lot easier to see in the daylight, which makes them easier to hit. So until the P-51 came along as a long-range bomber escort that could loosen up the Luftwaffe, mess up some mesh mitts while the bombers were doing their thing, most bombing runs were conducted at night, and a lot of times the bombers would miss entire cities because they simply couldn't see them. So hitting a little tiny dam at night would be virtually impossible and hitting it during the daylight would be nearly impossible but you getting shot down would be highly highly likely and then even if you did hit it the chance of destroying it with surface bombs are pretty low because most of the damn structure is protected by water okay so that's right out but we still have underwater missiles you can drop from airplanes called torpedoes which would work great except unlike ships that have to move around dams are stationary which meant that they could deploy this high-tech defense mechanism called a torpedo net which was literally just a net that they put out in front of the dam to, to catch a torpedo. But you know what a torpedo net can't stop? A bouncing bomb. Otherwise, they would have called it a bouncing bomb net, but they didn't have bouncing bombs yet, so they didn't know they needed one. So they get to testing these bouncing bombs, and they have this cylindrical bomb that's in a, in a wooden sphere to give it its, its round shape. Like a marble that British people skip in their gardens, I guess. So they scale it up to full size, and they, and they drop it out of an airplane, and uh, then the, 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 wooden, the wooden sphere shatters because there's a lot more physics involved now. But for me, this is the part of the story that I think is the coolest. Because in most cases in engineering, this is the part where you'd have to go back to the drawing board and figure out how to make sure your sphere continued being a sphere after you dropped it out of the airplane. But not this time because it turns out when all of that wooden sphere shattered away, the cylindrical bomb inside just skipped out and kept bouncing. So problem solved. Just... Don't do the wooden ball. After that problem literally solved itself, they built this contraption that would spin that whole cylinder backwards. And that backspin made it more stable, like a golf ball, helped it skip more reliably and consistently. And then when it actually hit the dam, it would roll itself down the surface of the dam underwater. So then they do a bunch of testing and they figure out they need to be exactly 60 feet off the surface of the water, flying at a ground speed of 232 miles per hour. And they needed to release it precisely 800 yards away from their target where it would skip seven times times and then detonate 90 seconds later, which is some pretty precise measurements for an airplane that predates color television. And I don't know exactly how the conversation went for the engineers trying to figure out how to solve this problem, but I picture it like there was a bunch of engineers sitting around a table doing calculus, trying to figure it out. And then one dude just yells out triangles and they're all like, what? And he's like, triangles, popsicle sticks, and flashlights. And then he gets out his grade school compass and a couple popsicle sticks, flashlights, and a hot glue gun and just goes to work like it's a grade school project. Uh, when he was done, the result was two lights that would be mounted to the bottom of the airplane. One at the rear pointed forward at an angle and one at the nose pointed straight down and made the angle so at 60 feet in the air, the light from the back one shining on the ground would touch the light from the front one shining on the ground. I'm like, well, when you're trying to sneak up on a dam in the middle of the night with a big ass airplane, putting, putting spotlights on the airplane isn't exactly ideal. It's effective and uh, we got nothing else. So I guess we'll go with that. But what about those popsicle sticks? You have these three little flat pieces of wood that might as well have been popsicle sticks 
that's uh, like attached all together in the shape of a Y. And on the bottom side, they put a handle on it so you could hold it like a gun. And at the top part of the Y, they put a little peg on each end. And at the bottom part of the Y, they put a washer that you could look through. And then they just adjusted it so the pegs were a certain distance apart so that when you were looking through that little washer at the pegs from the cockpit, when they lined up with a predetermined spot on the dam, you were exactly as far away as you needed to be and you drop your bomb. And it worked, but it was, it was still a, a pretty hard thing to do. In fact, a few of the bombers had to make uh, uh, quite a few passes to get all of their triangles lined up at the right speed at the right time to, to release their bomb, which isn't ideal because after your first pass, you've kind of lost the, the element of surprise. But in the end, it ended up being wildly successful. They completely destroyed three dams and the ensuing flood damaged or destroyed over 100 factories, over 30 bridges, destroyed a bunch of farmland. It was about as successful as they could have hoped for. Sadly, it did cause a lot of civilian casualties from the areas that were flooded. It destroyed some historic architecture and out of the 19 bombers that went on the raid, eight were lost and 53 of the 133 crewmen never made it home. Which sounds like massive losses, but sadly for RAF bombers, 44% casualty rates was the average. But their success has caused the dam busting raid to be immortalized as one of the most famous bombing raids in world history. And the air raid was even commemorated for its 80th anniversary this year with a flyover by the only two remaining airworthy Lancaster bombers in existence. And the fact that skipping some dam marbles turned into dam skipping bombs that were pretty damn effective at busting some dams, well, that is pretty damn mind-boggling.